Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another video. And this one is concerning a question from a fellow art student from South Africa. Thao. Thao. T-H-A-T-O. Sorry about mispronouncing your name. But the question was, can a person do a comic book by himself? And the reason I'm wearing glasses is because I'm looking tired. I'm looking tired. Okay, so can a person do a comic book by himself? And this this uh, question or this video is for everybody who wants to do a comic book by themselves but don't know how to do it or if they can do it. I'm going to show you step by step all the things you need in order to do a comic book. And there's a lot of depends in that as well. So... Let's go to the drawing table and I'll pull out some stuff and I'll show you what it takes to do a comic book by yourself. And I guess the answer would be yes, you can. I don't know if I just said that or not, but yes, you can do a comic book by yourself and maintain it as well. Because that was one of the things he said, can you manage a comic book by itself? So let's go to the drawing table and I'll show you what it takes. Let's go. All right. So to answer the question, it is a yes, you can make a comic book by yourself, but there are some, I don't want to say drawbacks, there are going to be some mountains you have to climb. So let's get into this and I'll try to break this down into full detail. So when I first decided to answer this question, I said, okay, this is going to be quick. But as I got into it, I just, I realized this is going to be, it's going to be long and detailed. So if you are trying to do a comic book or you want to do a comic book by yourself, these are all the things that you're going to need to know, hear, and understand. So stay with me and let's start going. Let's start going. Let's get going. All right. So, okay. First off, you're going to need a story. You're going to need a story, a good story. Not so much a different story because there are no such thing as different story. Everybody has the same story. Uh, man falls in love with a girl. Girl leaves a man, goes back and gets the girl. Uh, somebody's kidnapped. Somebody has to rescue him. So basically, it's the same story, but you just have to have a little twist to it. Now, I have had a number of people say they started stories and they don't know how to do it. So my thing is start at the end and then work your way back. As in, okay, you and let's say your school buddies, you take a trip to Hawaii, you know, and there's a volcano that's about to erupt while you and your friends are on the school trip. So you fly off to uh, Alaska or someplace and you use your, your laser vision and you cut up this big old glacier and then you fly back to Hawaii and shove it into the volcano. Cooling the volcano off, it won't erupt. Okay, that's the end of your story. Now you go backwards, okay? Now you got the fact that you and your friends or you and your classmates went to Hawaii. Maybe you went to the trip to Hawaii because you studied volcanoes in school. Okay, so you're, going, you're moving yourself backwards. You already have your ending. Now you have your middle on your beginning or start at the beginning from the end and then your middle piece will come like at the beginning you're waking up and you are getting ready to go to school you know you can meet your friends on the way to school you're talking about you know the trip to hawaii um in between the um you could have been talking about, you know, a, a vol volcanoes or something. You could have been studying volcanoes, you know, how they, they you know, re or how they form, blah, blah, in school. So start with your end. Finish that. Get a good end. Whether something you stop something from blowing up, somebody you saved the, the girl or you saved the guy, you saved the world, whatever. And then go to the beginning and then your middle should be there. Uh, what else was I going to say about the story? What else was I going to say about the story? This is what I was going to say. If you do a story, if you're doing comic book, you have a story. How long is your story? Is it going to be a one off? Is it just like a just graphic novel? Just, you know, one long story, one short story. Or are you going to take your story and you're going to break it up into pieces and have separate books like five issues, 10 issues, 20 issues. So if you have that, let's say if you're going to do multiple issues, you have to be able to stop your story at a point where it's exciting to come back to your next book. 
Just like if you look at any drama on TV, just look at where they place the commercials or what happens right before they place the commercial. Somebody breaks into the house. Somebody uh, is shot. Somebody uh, is, runs in front of a car. You know, they always have the cliffhanger, as they call it, so that you'll come back to the show. It's never somebody's going to go to the refrigerator and, you know, get a glass of water. They go to the refrigerator and open the refrigerator and it blows up and commercial. So you have to find out what happens afterwards. So anytime you do a, a, a book or a story that's going to take multiple issues to finish that, that, that story, you have to need to know where to stop and where to start again. So... Story writing, story writing, story writing. I think that's about it. How long is the story? Start from the end, the beginning, and your middle should lead up. All right, so next up is character design. Character design. Now, you can see through the paper because I have some characters I want to show you. Character design. A lot of times people will do, just draw a quick character. Let, let me do this. They'll draw like this quick thing and like, oh, this is my character. You know, I'm going to do my story, you know, from this character. But whenever you do a character design, you have to be able to draw that character from multiple positions, which I will show you in a minute. So for every character that you have in your story, you have to be able to draw that character from multiple positions. So... What I showed you earlier was Trials of the Samurai Clown. This is my flagship book. I have a couple other books, but this is the flagship because this is the one I put so much into. So these are the characters from the Trials of the Samurai Clown. Character, as I say, for each character, you have to design them And they go on and on because this is a circus. So you have to have a lot of people in the circus. So you think about that. Every time you have somebody like we got, you have you have um, you have Batman, Bruce Wayne. You have Dick Grayson, Robin. You have uh, Barbara Gordon. You have um, uh, Lucius Fox. You have um, Gordon. You know, so all these characters you have to make up in order to have a nice story. So this is the main character. A, the Samurai Clown. Okay, as I was saying, you have to know how to draw these characters from every angle. You can't just throw a nice little pinup like that and then expect you to make a comic book out of it. You have to be able to draw your character. You have to be able to design your character, know what he is like or she is like from every angle. In costume, out of costume, regular clothes, um, happy, mad, sad. However, you have to know what your character looks like. And you have to just continue to draw your character over and over and over and over and over again in multiple positions so that you will understand or you will get used to being able to draw your character's face, you know, without even thinking, oh, I can draw the clown just, you know, because I've drawn them so much. Now I can draw them quickly and easily without having to go back to a reference picture, the very first picture that I did to find out how to draw their character. So I tell a lot of people, if you have a character that you want to draw or you have a character that you have created, stop drawing Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and Thor and just draw your character. A lot of people will continue to draw. I have friends that do that. They continue to draw these superheroes that somebody else made, and they'll put that up on Facebook, and then everybody like, oh, nice Batman drawing, that nice, nice Captain America drawing. You want to get your character out there. You want people to say, who is that? What is that? And that way you get that, that, that ball rolling so people will know your character. So stop drawing everybody else's character and only draw your character. All right, so once you have your character design done you have to have colors for all your characters and that was always the biggest problem with me is finding out which color would go where or how what color would match or what would it look like so you have to come up with that for every character you have to have their color scheme and this is just the clown so these are all my characters 
These are the colors that I chose for them. And here's another, this is like a pinup I did. This is another pinup I did. Those who have been around have seen these. I just went through all of my uh, stuff to grab stuff. I went through all my drawings connected to grab stuff so that you will understand a little bit more. So I didn't have to draw anything really new here. Not, not yet, anyway. So colors, you have to have the colors for the characters. So weapons and powers. Does your character have weapons? Does your character have powers? How did he get those powers? How did she get those powers? What kind of weapons do your characters use? So that's something else you have to think about. So basically, you're giving birth to a child and you have to raise this child and teach this child how to walk and to talk and feed this child, you know, find out the allergies, all of that stuff. So creating a comic book is a full-time job. That's something I should have said in the very beginning. Doing a comic book by yourself is a full-time job. Now, if you are young and you don't have any obligations, you don't have kids, you don't have like a job yet, it would be much easier for you to do this. But if you have a job and two or three kids and bills to pay and, you know, have to work overtime, it's going to be freaking near impossible to put out a comic book and continue to put it out. I started The Samurai Clown in 2000. I think that's when the first book came out. And that's 2021 right now, going on 2022 right now. And you will not be able to, it takes about a year before you can get everything together, before you can start your comic book. Because you can say, oh, this is my character right here. And I'll start drawing the book now. And you don't know who his friends are. You don't know where he lives. You don't know any of that stuff. But you're just drawing the book. And you're going to come to a point where you're going to stop because your brain is not wrapped around everything. You don't have the answers to everything and you'll stop and you will mess up. So these are just some of the things that the clown uses, his weapons. These are some of the designs that I had to go through to tell the powers of his weapons versus like the powers of, of Superman's powers. You'd have to go through and explain all of that stuff. You will have a ton of papers before you finish, before you can even write, I mean, before you can even like start really drawing your, your character, you will have a stack of stuff showing you or, yeah, that you would have to work out before you can, you know, get started. So, character stories. Okay, I, I, for a second, I just, what, what? Okay, so, for every character, again, you have to have a story behind each one, uh, Bruce Wayne, as a kid, had it was his parents were billionaires, and they got shot in front of him. Uh, it messes messes his head up. He became he went a vigilante. He became the Batman. So you have to have that for every character, every character. So these are just you know some of the some of the writings that you have to do. Hopefully, you are a writer that you will be able to write stuff for your characters. As I say, if you've got 20 characters, that means there's 20 bios that you have to have to write. So this is why I say this is the flagship, because I put so much into this comic book that I cannot really just give it up. All right. Now we got that down. Drawing the anatomy. How good are you to draw? Now, you're trying to do this by yourself. You have to work on your anatomy, because that's going to be the one thing that people look at is your anatomy. Fortunately, you have Brian Proctor's channel to watch when you do anatomy. So just draw. As I say, draw draw for fun. Draw. Don't try to make every picture just the greatest picture in the world. Is this one page or two pages? This is thick paper, cardstock. You know, draw for fun for, for the longest time. And then always put your character's face on top of your drawing. So whatever way he or she may be turned, draw your face on there. Draw that face on there so that you get used to drawing your character. Even though you're just trying to draw some positions, if there's a head on there, put your character's face on there. So anatomy, very important to do. You don't have to be perfect at it yet. After your third book, you, you'll be really good at anatomy because you're just drawing constantly. 
So don't worry about your first book. A lot of people have stressed out over the, the first book. When me and my friends started a company, little company, um, I remember one guy, he was stressed out the first book. It had to be so perfect, so, so, so perfect that it killed his time for getting it out. And today, in 2021, 20 years ago, 21 years ago, I don't think that he actually put a book out yet because he let that just kill him. Oh, I got to get this this hand just right. I got to get that, that thumb to look right. The foot is, you know, just put it out, put it out. It's not going to hit number one on the charts right away. It's going to take time for people to discover it. And being that you are a new artist and a new book, they're not going to critique you and say, oh, don't buy that book. You're not going to see this on the 11 o'clock news. Oh, his hand was wrong. Don't buy his book. Put it out there. The more you draw, the better you will become. So by drawing and drawing and drawing, you will eventually get it. Perspective drawings. And this is the only thing I'm going to have to do a little bit of drawing on. I should have done it before I started filming. But since I started, let's do this. Perspective drawing. Next to anatomy, you need to be able to do perspective. I should have said perspective and shapes is what I should have said. Because without perspective, you are lost unless your character is like in space or, or underwater or um, in a blizzard, snow blizzard somewhere. But you're going to have to know your, your one point perspective, which thanks to Brian's channel, your two point perspective and your three-point perspective. So you're going to have to do that, which which means you're going to have to be able to do your shapes as well, triangle, and then put them bad boys in perspective. You know, one-point perspective, two-point, two-point, like this, two-point perspective, three-point perspective is going to go, it's going to go more, uh, what was it going, going down like this, okay? Three point perspective like that. Yeah, so you're gonna to have to learn perspective and it takes about a year. It takes really about a year before you can master perspective. So don't start out your first book with um, your character flying through uh, the city and all you have all your skyscrapers and your other things and your scaffolding that's um, you know being built around your your buildings and you know because that is that's gonna that's gonna drive you crazy because you're always gonna be trying to get that just right before you can you know want to put your want to put your book out so practice perspective a good book to me a really good book and perspective is this give me a second perspective for comic book artists this is a really good book David Chelsea, 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 Chelsea. Okay, I'm not good at names. So the reason I like this book is because the way he wrote it is comic book style. The whole thing is done in comic book style. So basically, basically, it's like reading a comic book while you are learning perspective. Now, there are some easier books, but this kind of breaks it down in comic book form. This is, this is a big book, and it really, really gets advanced on you so um just take what you can understand in the beginning and then don't worry about the advanced advanced stuff like you know when you first start out and trying to draw your comic book don't try to do this you know to show off like oh i'm, I'm going to do this especially if you don't really understand perspective because people will accept a few mistakes but when you're making like dozens and dozens and dozens of mistakes you know in your uh on your paper, then that's kind of, um, yeah, that's kind of unforgiving. Okay, people will start picking that out. So, learn perspective, learn your shapes. Learn your shapes first, then learn perspective. Maybe this video won't be as long as I thought, but we're still going in there. Inking, okay? So, once you learn to draw your characters, you have to ink it. You know, I've seen a few comics that where they just penciled it and then because the guy was just so tight of a penciler that they they copied his pencils and then they put it directly in the book you might not be able to do that so you're going to have to practice your inking your inking so anything you draw ink it okay it doesn't have to be perfect what you are doing you are practicing if you draw this whatever 
if you just draw, I don't wanna get into anything big. If you just draw this, whatever this is, okay, whatever this is, take something and just ink it. Uh, find an ink one that works, it's too big. All right, whatever, I'm just gonna grab one. Take it and ink it, this is, this is the fat, I wouldn't do it, wouldn't normally. Everything you have, just ink it. Or everything you draw, ink it. Because don't draw to try to make something so perfect. Draw practicing. Practice your anatomy. Once you get your anatomy, ink it. Practice where your shadow, your light and shadow is going to go. Practice your hatching, all of that stuff. Just practice. It's all about that practice so that you can become a better artist. As I say, the more you draw, the better you will become. You just have to draw it without thinking, oh, it's got to be so perfect. It's got to be so right. Hopefully that didn't go through and mess up my paper. Hopefully, yeah. Okay, so yeah, practice, practice. Draw without any pressure. I'm going to draw this and I don't care what it looks like. This should be your attitude. All right, inking, still going on inking. Practice whatever you draw, ink it, ink it, ink it, ink whatever you draw, ink it, ink it. So, this is the actual first page to Trials of the Samurai Clown. This is one of the first pages, the first like three or four pages. So, um, I did this is my first comic book. As I said, it's my first comic book. This is the first time I inked because I couldn't afford an inker. So, I had to learn myself. So, these are the inks that I did in my first pages. And because I couldn't do color, or I couldn't afford a color, I did a, what is it? Oh, oh um, like a gray, gray scale, gray scale wash. If you see like these, the hands coming out of the dirt, you see they, I use the gray scale markers to do some of this stuff just to um, give it some kind of a tone to it. Because I was not one, I didn't know, understand hatching. I didn't understand, you know, um, feathering. So... A lot of it I did with the gray scale markers. And as if you look at it, you know, the drawings are okay, but I'm a lot better at drawing now. I had to put my pride aside um, by saying, you know, okay, I can't do this. Let me get as close as I can because I wanted this story out. This was a good story. I wanted it out. So I did the best I can. Because I knew around right about my third or fourth book, I was going to be much better at drawing. Book number five, much better at drawing. So, yeah, compared to this versus this. So what happens when I get to book 20? Working for DC, baby, working for DC. All right. Materials, materials. You've got your drawing, you got your story, you got your anatomy down, you know how to ink, you got all of that stuff. You're doing all this stuff on copy paper. You just copy paper. You're doing it, you know, you're not trying to do anything fancy, get any fancy paper. You're doing it in, in old sketch pads, uh, copy paper, just trash paper because you're not trying to be professional yet. So, materials, you got all that down, so you're ready to do. Your comic book. You're ready to start. What materials are you going to use? So I'm going to pause it here and get all my materials together so that you can see the bare, bare essentials. Is that the right word? Bare essentials of materials that you need. So pause it right here. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so materials. This is what you're going to need. You start out with your pencil. You always need a pencil and you need a good eraser. I like the white kind of gum erasers. I don't like those pink Erasers, they're crap because these erasers, when they erase, they really don't leave that much of a mess where the pink erasers do and they'll leave pink on your paper. So if you can get a white gum eraser, I think that's what it's called. White, it's just a white one. You'll, you'll, yeah, there's not too many different white erasers. Pencil, I would recommend a red and a blue pencil. You don't have to use it. I use it one because they are, um, non photocopyable you know you don't they don't photocopy so you can use your red as just your rough go back over it with your blue in more detail and you can ink it from there or you can go a final time to get that final 
you know, um, detail with your pencil. Um, some markers. You're going to need some markers. Usually two or three different sizes. This is a 005. And it just has a little teeny, teeny, teeny pen. The little nib right here on the end. I like that for like, basically, all. I do all my drawings in, in this. And then I'll come back with a little larger pen. This is the S. This is a, just a smaller. I guess it's just S for small. And then some type of a fat pen for like filling in your blacks. Some type of pen brush. It's good to, to master the pen brush because if you have a good one, it has a point to it. And you can kind of ink everything with, where is it, where is it, with that point and then make it thicker or thinner. So I will leave um, links to all these materials that you will need. But right off the bat, you, if you're going to ink, you're going to you're going to need some pens. You're going to need you know pencil. You really don't have to use these. You don't have to, but you can. I like it. But you know this this and a couple ink pens are all you're going to need in the beginning. You're going to have a ruler if you're doing buildings. You're going to have the ruler if you're doing perspective. You're going to have to have a ruler. I like this ruler because it, basically it rolls, so I can put a line right here, uh, put a line right here, roll down line right there so they should still be parallel to one another versus picking it up and then trying to get it back there you know so it's just it's just it's just really good especially if i'm if i'm trying to ink you know a bunch of lines together because i'm just rolling it they should all be parallel so it's just a good good ruler to have one of these rolling rulers i um as i said i'll leave a link to um I will leave a link to everything that I say or I show you. And again, the white eraser doesn't leave much of a mess. I don't have a pink eraser. I will show you the difference, but I don't allow them in the house. So let me pull back just for a second. No, I don't want to pull back. I'm just going to show you the corner of this. This is the blue line paper. I'll show you the corner. This is the blue line paper. This is the professional stuff that you buy for your comic books. You get maybe like, how many sheets do they give you? 25 sheets for like, it used to be like $25 for like 20 or 25 sheets. But now I think it's much more for 25 sheets if they give you 25 sheets. Now, the only difference between this paper, this blue line paper, and I mean, this might not be the actual blue line, but this is the professional cover. This is Stratmore, Stratmore right here. Focus, focus on that Stratmore right there. So the difference between this and this, this is just basically uh, cardstock, 11 by 17, same size, same size. It just does not have these blue line borders. And a lot of times you won't use the border. This is the only thing that you have to pay attention to. This is where you don't want to draw outside. It's called the bleed area. You don't want to draw outside that. And this is, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like either one or two inches by half an inch or one inch. So all you have to do, let me measure this. This is the bleed area. Let's just say right here with my one. This is like, it's an inch. Is that an inch by, am I looking at centimeters? Yes, I'm looking at centimeters. So this is one inch by half an inch. The top is one inch bleed area where you don't go past. And this is, where's my thing at? Half an inch. About half an inch, yeah. So all you have to do is take this paper here, draw a line, one inch, pencil, pencil. I'm gonna mess this up because there's something on the back of this. Draw a line, one inch all the way across, and then half inch here. Take your ruler, take your ruler, just roll it there, and then you do, you do your, your bleed area might be crooked on that paper. I don't know. It's just, just a quick rough. You have your bleed area drawn out, okay? Simple. Now, what did I say? 25 sheets? I think this might be $28 or $30 nowadays. I'll leave a link to it. This camera zoomed in really close. I'll leave a link to, like I say, everything. So $25, $30 for um, 25 sheets, maybe 25 So this, 
the same stuff without the lines. This is 250 sheets for like 25 to $30. 250 sheets of the same thing. All you're doing is adding the blue lines. You don't need all of this. What is this? Does anybody ever read that stuff? And they have like inner lines. <sighs> Who needs that? And then they have the little lines for you. You can draw your little, your, your panels in. My panels might not be that big. My panels might go across the whole page. My panel might be this small. So don't be fooled by, you know, because, oh, it's Strathmore or it's, 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 it's image paper. It's, you know, I'm sorry. Same thing. It's a card stock. It's just got blue lines all over it. You don't need that. I'll show you that. I'll show you why later. Um, so, yeah, your ink, paper, pencil, materials. All right, let's get back into this. Get back into this. We got a few more to go. A few more to go. Materials. You got that. Thumbnails and layouts. Okay. Collect reference material. This is probably going to be the most important part right here. Collect reference material. All right. Thumbnails and layouts. Once you have your characters, you're, you, you, you're good enough with your anatomy that you can do. You can ink. You got your story. You got everything together. You're going to start laying that stuff out, your story out with your thumbnails. So basically with this, I'll use the back of this paper. Um, you're going to do your panels. You're going to do panels. And what I do, no, let me use a different paper without so much stuff. You have to figure out, you have your page. Let's just say this represents one page, uh, 11 and a half by 17. This is how I do it. Okay, so I say to myself, from the story that I wrote, that I broke down, I said, okay, this is going to be panel one. This is this is close up of his eyes. He, he saw something. What? what did I just see? He saw something. And then this is going to be panel two. This is the crazy guy looking at him like, yeah, you saw me, didn't you? Okay, this is going to be panel three. This is uh, a car, maybe. He's going to steal, the crazy guy's going to steal that car, which is his car. And he's standing right here. And panel four. Now, I would get no more than six panels per page. If you can get eight or ten, it's just, it gets so small. Your panels get so small that people can't make heads or tails. Four is great. Six is better. So one, two, three, four. And let's just say I'll split it like this. Or maybe this one can be a long panel. And this one can be the panel the one panel that draws you in okay so we can have say like this he's got the he's let's just say he's he's holding the keys up okay so he's got the keys to the guy's car he stole his car keys he's holding them up he's like ha ha got your keys so uh okay so let's just say this one ties everything in this is this is get a little kind of perspective this is the wheels he's smoking you know he drove off and this guy, he's like chasing him. He's like, wait, wait. So that's the one that ties it all off. And that is the biggest panel. So you can't have, you can, but you can't have every, you shouldn't have every panel the same size because some panels are less important than other panels. Now, let's just say I did this key right here, him holding the keys up. And this huge panel right here, and I had him running after the car, and this tiny panel right there. It would not have worked as well. So you have to be able to be able to do your layouts, all your thumbnails. So that would be panel one or page one. And then you go to page two, page three, page four, page uh, depending on how many pages you have, and you just lay out your panels. So you don't need this these lines here telling you where to put your lines at where well, you can't see that line down there you don't need these telling you where to put your panels your panel might be round your panel might be jagged or crooked or something like that so don't buy into the hype of i have to buy all this comic book paper where you spend i don't know how many hundreds of dollars and maybe have 30 sheets 45 sheets when you can get 250 sheets for the price of 25 sheets so, yeah, you're trying to save money because you're doing all this stuff by yourself. So, uh, okay, like I said, panels. This, these are the panels that I did for um, my clown, Samurai Clown. You know, and you're going to be doing 
panel after panel after panel, and you're going to be saying, okay, that won't work. Let me try to figure out. So you have to be able to take these shapes in your head and be able to turn it around because these shapes are ultimately going to be, you know, your characters, your, your, your men, you know, your women, your, your, your whatever. So you're going to have to be able to do that. I'll get back to this in a second before you can lay out your panel because you don't want every panel. He's looking forward. He's looking forward. He's looking forward. Like I tilted this guy. Look, I'm looking down at the camera. This is a close up. I don't know what this is, but oh, you guys looking from behind a tree. Here's a tree right here. Here's a guy peeking out from there. And I don't know what that is because this has been, oh, there's another tree and something. I don't know. So it's been a minute, but you got to remember what, what the stuff is. I, if I look at it long enough, I'll remember what it is. This is, this is his feet. He threw the like handcuffs down at his feet. And these are the guys looking behind, from behind the tree. Let me, give me just a second to see what book that is in that is not in this book. Is it? No, I think it's in this book. And I will show you this exact panel page. No, it's not in this book. I think there's a book missing in my lineup of books. I think one is missing. Four. Four might be missing because I believe that's in color. Is it this one? Give me two seconds. Don't worry about this old man right there. He's nobody. He's nobody. No, it's the is it this? It's the next book. It's the next book that is not printed yet. It is ready. I just have to send it to the publisher. That's the thing. I had to get this. I had to re. I had to re-letter this book. I had to re-letter this book. So the other book is ready. I just have to send it to the publisher. So this is the next book. So don't you didn't see any of that peeping behind tree stuff. So okay, what did I say? Thumbnails layout and collect reference material. Now, as I said, this is going to be the one of the most important things about doing comic books. Anytime you have a story, the guy lives in an abandoned warehouse, the guy uh, drives an old Chevy, the guy wears disco shoes, find reference pictures on everything in your story that's possible to find. Find that, that way, that way, that way, it would make it easier for you to draw something. Now, maybe you're not going to draw this building at this angle, but you can see that it has windows that come here and is around. So it's easy for you to draw the building long ways and say, okay, so it's got windows like this. And the bottom has some something down here. And let's say that I put a fire hydrant down here. And the roof has all these levels here. And you don't have to be exact, but you're close enough to it to make it look realistic. And the windows have, you know, these going across it and one could be broken out like that. And then here's my character. He's walking back in, you know, he's pacing, pacing, because he's worried about something. He's got his arms behind him. He's pacing, he's smoking a cigarette, you know, in front of the, the warehouse, which really means something, which has meaning to it. So, Anything. If you're drawing uh, your friends cruising to Hawaii to go see this volcano on a cruise ship, find as much reference material on cruise ship. Even if you have to look at somebody's video of, oh, we took a cruise to the Bahamas, you know, uh, free pause it, you know, and then take us, uh, what do you call it, a screenshot of it. Just as much reference material as you can of anything that has to do with your story is another this is like the inside of a warehouse this is uh the inside of a conference room this was something i was going to use in another one of my stories you know now i know what an expensive rich kind of conference room looks like i can turn the table long ways and have the people sitting at it from you know a different angle but the wall you know the, the nice wall instead of just having a flat blank wall you know just a sheetrock wall you want to have a nice kind of wall you know nice carpet that goes down on the, on the ground so find as much reference material keep it in a folder uh, either you know a manila folder or in a folder in your computer but get as much reference material as you can don't try to guess oh what does a what does a nuclear submarine control station look like don't, don't try to guess that stuff get reference very important. All right. So next one, what it is? Finish drawings and inks. All right. So now I'm going to have to pull back because I want you to see 
this stuff in detail. Finished drawings plus inks. All right, so you have everything down. You got your, you have your, your, your anatomy, you got your inking down, you got all your materials, you got your paper. You are ready to draw, you have your story. So now you take your pencil, and make sure I got all of it here, because some of it, okay. And you start drawing. Now these are, these are old, this is something I was gonna send in for a, uh, just like a tryout, just because I was feeling antsy. And some of you people have seen this, some of you have may not. These are my finished drawings. Now I did all this in pencil. I didn't do, this is before I discovered the red and blue pencil. So these are my finished drawings and you notice a panel. And yes, I did use blue line. That was back in the day before I discovered that I didn't have to spend all this money on blue line uh, paper. Finished drawing so I can ink this. This is, this is good enough for me to be able to ink. These are like tight line drawings. No, I did do blue pencil. I did blue pencil. I didn't do my red pencil. Yeah, I'm, I'm a liar. I see my blue pencil. It's been that long. I didn't do the red. It's blue and then this. Because the blue is non-photocopyable. So, perspective, down shot, one point perspective. I think it's another down shot. Uh, kind of like oh, at the angle, at the uh, going to the, <laughs> an angle. And then more. It comes to heroes. So, you know, find a reference to exit sign. I had to look at it, you know, as the exit, the actual fonts used for exit. Because I never, you know, we see exit signs, but we don't know what fonts they use for that. So, inking, again, it's got to be tight to ink. Now, this was a drawing I did for somebody a long time ago. I used to draw, I used to do um, penciling. For people, you know, if you can, I don't know how I, I did that, but I would do it for free, absolutely free. I'm doing your book for free, and the reason was I wasn't confident enough to do my own book, so I would do your book. That way, if there was a slight mistake, I wouldn't really worry too much about it because it wasn't my book, you know. So this is how I grew my talents by doing so much work for so many other people. But this is inking, you know. This is inking. Practice your inking. And yeah, at this point, I'm just kind of like showing off. And this was this was a while back. This was this was really a while back. But I wanted to practice my inking, as I said. So without the pressure of oh, this is mine, this is mine, this is somebody else's. I, I'll ink it. And I can you know mess it up. So you know, do your do your pencil drawings, get your angles, get your so forth, and then start practicing inking. However, you can do inking. Always ink whatever you draw. Try to ink it. Like I said, don't play around with it. Just go ahead and and then ink it. So. Yeah. So you got all that down. You got your inking. You got your story. You have everything down. You got your drawing, your final drawings. Now, one thing that it's got to fit in here somewhere is your, and I think that's the, that's the next, that's the very next page on here, I think, is word balloons, text, and effects fonts. All right? Word balloon, text, and effects fonts. All right. Now, so one thing you have to know, your word balloons, start out with your word balloons. When you do your rough sketches, glad this was still here. When you do your rough sketches, I'm dropping something. I dropped my pencil. I got all my papers. Let me move all my papers. Uh, I guess I'll zoom back in now. I think I can. Let me zoom back in. Okay. So when you do your thumbs, when you do your roughs, let's see if I can find mine. You need to have room for your words, okay? You have to have your word balloons. Depends on how much dialogue, that's the word, dialogue a person has. That because that will determine how big or where you place your picture. So this car is here. He's here. Here's the perfect place for a word balloon without chopping off anything. Right here, if, if I had a word balloon, I would have to shift his eyes over to put the word balloon here. It depends on what he's saying. He could say, oh, no, you know, and that's perfect. That's all he need. But if he's saying, oh, no, he took my, he got my car keys and he's over there by my car and he's laughing at me. He's going to say, my car. That's too much. They, the rule of thumb is you can only put so many words in a word balloon. That's kind of a, a rule of thumb, but you shouldn't do like this, this. 
this and it, it has been done before on this this but i mean if you have to do it you know you you just do it but you you, you by doing that you're chopping off all of your drawing so you're going to have to be able to save some room for your word balloons you got the keys right here so even with me just playing around i still have word rooms room for my word balloons so and it was something like this you know you, you're going to have to have some space you're going to have to cover something up so that was something else i said in a video if you know that these guys are going to be talking a lot I wouldn't put detail here. I'd figure out where I've had my word balloon. Let me find word balloons. Let me find that my roughs. Okay, here we go. So even in my roughs, I put the word balloons. So I'll know what they're saying. And when I do my final, I know where to actually put the person in the panel. Let's see if I can get a better rough of my panel. All these are our roughs. But I don't have a close-up like this in particular. There's like a lot of words in here. So I would have to shift that over a little bit to fit these words or shrink the, you know, the dialogue. But like this guy's right in the corner because he had a lot to say and he said something else. So sometimes you can drag your balloon out of the corner. Like if he said all of this, then he had to say more. You can drag it down into the next panel so he was saying something then he said something and then he said something after that so i didn't have to really draw him again because you know he's still talking so when you do your roughs make sure you have room for your word balloons so like depending on what he was saying some of these bottles would have to get covered up and you know i want to ink this i kind of want to ink this but i don't because I, I would say inking is probably my weakest is it weakest I don't know, either perspective or inking. I can do perspective, but nobody can really do perspective. <laughs> I can do perspective, but it's not going to be perfect. So inking, but inking is so so final. You know, it is so final. If I start inking this and I sneeze and my brush went across, it's messed up. If I do perspective and perspective is wrong, I can change it with just a snap of an eraser. So you have to, where, where was that? What was I on? What was I on? You have to leave room for your word balloons. Where's, where did my paper go? Your special effects and your fonts, text and effects. Okay, word balloons, text and effects. Like your text would be um, like up in this corner somewhere, you know, uh, or wherever. You know, five o'clock in the morning, there's a ruckus as people run out of the bar. You know, that's your your, your, your text in, in the little square box. That's your announcer saying whatever. So just even on the cover of my book, you have to have, you know, your text. Brian Proctor, something's in the woods. You know, just I mean, we'll get into all the covers and stuff later. So you just need to know, you just need to have room for your words. All right, let's, let's just, just go over top of this. Okay, there's one more, but there's something I missed on this. Fonts, fonts. What type of letters are you going to use for your words? What kind of letters are you going to use for your cover? Um, you, what kind of letters are you going to use for your texts? And let's just say one guy was English, but one guy spoke French. So you might want to use a different text or different font for the French speaking guy as in like I have one I don't have a picture so I can't show you but with the guys fighting demons he spoke regular fonts and the demons had a different kind of font to it so there are free sites where you can find fonts but the free sites the free fonts always suck because most of them are effects special effects sites like you know the lion roaring uh, the lion roaring, roar, roaring, roaring, like, for instance, when he's chopping a tree down, you know, and this was hand drawn right there. I could have, you know, if I had a professional, I could have done it more professionally. This was not hand drawn. I gave the guy, I gave this book to someone to letter it, but it didn't work. 
and I relettered it. I'll tell you about that later. So, but you just, you know, little special effects, things like that you might, you, you might need. Let's see if I got another special effects up in here, like the lion roaring, roaring, roaring. You have to have different letters from the person talking. And as I was saying, fun, a lot of the free stuff kind of sucks for word balloons. Now, some, I mean, it's really good for special effects. I've seen so many, but there are some that you have to pay for. You know, they, they tell you right in the, when you, you can download them, but they have this little thing like if you use it, it's free to use for nonprofit stuff. You know, but when you're trying to do a comic book and you're going to make money off of it, then if they find you, they're going to get mad and they're going to charge you. They really don't charge you much. You can give like $20 or $10 or something saying, hey, I'm using your fonts because I guess they would be happy that somebody is using their creation. So it doesn't cost much, but all the good fonts, they charge you for that. So, you know, you can always use what is the, the one that everybody hates. I don't know why they hate that. Comic Sans. I don't know why everybody who started that, we hate Comic Sans. Use Comic Sans. I bet you if Marvel and DC got together and did a, a X Men, uh, X Men, no, what was it? Um, the Avengers versus, um, not Super Friends, <laughs> Avengers versus um, Justice League, and they did it in Comic Sans. N nobody would have a problem with that. Everybody would buy that book to death. Okay, so I don't know who got the Comic Comic Sans kind of thing. Use whatever you want. You know, don't worry about what people say. If your story is good, people will read it. So fonts, go to free sites, download some. But like I say the good ones are, you got to pay for. You can always do it by hand. You can, back in the day, they did it by hand. They just drew the line, uh, wrote ink, and erased everything, and then put the word balloon on there. If this is your first time and you, you, you're having trouble doing that, yeah. If you don't have that program, you might not have a, a computer. You might not have Photoshop to be able to do this kind of stuff. Do it by hands. It's your first book. It's your first book. It's your party. You can cry if you want to. All right, so one last thing, which I did not have. I'm going to do two things, and I'm going to cover your cover as well. But as I was doing these things, I was trying to figure out where I was and, you know, grab the material I need. So you have, let's say, this is my story. Boom, I got it. I got it. It's done. It's done. It's inked. I have my word balloons. I have everything in place. I'm ready to get this thing done. I just forgot what I was going to say. Give me a second. I got it. <laughs> Publishing. How can I get this thing published? Now, this is kind of like where you can do it yourself. Uh, you can't do it yourself. You know, this is the, the whole thing is can you publish, can you manage a comic book by yourself? So, two things you can do. You can either go to like uh, any kind of uh, office place like Kinko's or whatever, and you can have this stuff copied and shrunk down and put in. They can staple it themselves at, at whatever store, uh, office supply. A lot of people will do that because that's all it is. It's just it's just paper. It's just like this long paper, fold, you know, print it, print it, fold it, stapled, put together. That's it. And that, you know, this is your book. So you can have that done by yourself, or you can go to a copy place, depending on where you live in the world. Like I use Kablam. There was one set I did on Kablam and I, I explained why, why. Here's my other one. I need my other book. It's the same book. Let me pick that up. Give me two seconds. And this is Comic Wellspring, same book. Different cover. This is the cover that I colored. I have a, a color. I have a, I hired a colorist now because I've got so much going on. I, I hired people to help me out. This is my cover that I colored. I sent it to him to recolor it, actually. I wanted to see what he could do with it. And he did this particular type of color, a cover, color to the cover. And I kind of like that because it was something different. So I went with that one for the actual book that is out. Now, I had this published at Comic, Comic Well Springs, which is cheaper than Kablam. Problem is, these guys don't advertise and they don't ship it to you like these guys, okay? This was cheaper and the paper is thicker. The paper is definitely thicker than this paper. This paper is not bad. 
a little flimsy compared to this thick kind of cardstock, okay, paper. So I had to reprint it with Kablam. So I had to redo the, the fonts, the fonts. I had somebody actually do the, the, on this, and I had to go back and reprint it myself. Or re, I had to re-letter it myself because I had to get it reprinted because I couldn't find the original lettering that he did. So, yeah, as I say, you can either do, do it this way, but I mean, if you want to advertise because Kablam is partners with, and I can't think of it, what it's called, but if they print your book, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's in their database. You can order as many as you want, or, and also they send it to a company that actually ships your book out to other people. I don't know about worldwide, but <clears throat> so this is a, it's a better way to do it. And advertising. So nobody knows about your book. Nobody knows about anything until you advertise it. So these guys advertise. They advertise as well. So you can always say, oh, I have a book printed out. Go to this such and such and you can see my books. Whereas this, they just ship, ship it to you and let you do all the advertising yourself. So if you did not go this route, you went the route of, I'm going to go to the uh, office supply place, have my books copied, have everything copied, printed out, made my own books. You have to advertise it yourself. You have to mail it out yourself. Excuse me while I get some water because I can only say so many words before my throat dries up. So if you have Facebook, Twitter, and everything else, you're going to have to do that even if you do this. Go one of these routes. You're going to have to say, hey, I have a new book. Here's where you can get it. You can either get a website to uh, uh, show your books or go have them go here where they have a website that can show your books and they will ship it. You don't have to worry about any of that. They'll take that cut and then they'll send you the rest of the money. Whereas you can do everything by yourself. They order the book from you. You ship it to wherever. You keep all the money except for shipping and handling unless you say to, to them, oh, you pay for shipping and handling. And then turn, I'm going to turn it this way. You can see the whole thing. And then you have just, you know, a few more pennies in your pocket. But, you know, that's that's a headache because if you're busy, you're doing something and somebody ordered and you might miss that order or you forgot to, to order that thing. And it's like two weeks later and, you know, they write to you, hey, man, I sent you my money. Where's my books? You know, so, yeah, you lose the address, any little thing. So it's hard to do that on top of doing everything else. So you're out. Okay, so now you have all of that done. You got that. You're professional. You have your, 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 your comic book. You get your pages together. You're good to go. Just switch up for you guys something else to look at. You're good to go. So now you need a cover. You need a cover. Again, fonts. What kind of fonts am I going to use for my cover? Let me grab a couple of professional books. Okay, X-Men. Font. Magdalena. Font. Fathom font. Everybody has a different type of font. And your font should be big enough, big enough to stand out so that when people can see that from like across the room, they'll know what your book is. Now, see, I can shoot this up. I can say it's too small, too dark, but where's my first book? And this is something I had to learn the hard way. Where is my first book? Here it is. This is the number one book. This is the number one clown book. Now, you see this the little tiny font right here? It should have went all the way across. I should have dropped this and then put the font all the way across. Something that, you know, I had to learn. <clears throat> I had to learn to do. So, my throat is going out again. Give me a second. All right, let's try that again. It's a learning process. It is a learning process. So, as I said, it, it, it has to be big enough and catchy enough, and you want it to be bright as well. So, this is the first book. What I got, let me just open it up and show you. This is, the, you know, these are my drawings compared. Then, and now, it's, you know, it's a big, it's a big difference. I have, no, I don't have anything on the back. So, <clears throat> as I said, these are my, my first and inking my first um 
what's the word? My first journey, my first adventure, my first whatever in inking. And putting a comic book together. So, I've come a long way. But you're doing a comic book. Look how much you're drawing. How many how many times you're drawing the anatomy and how many different, you know, positions you're drawing the anatomy. So you are drawing this you are drawing stuff to death. So, you learn to draw quickly when you do comic books. And that's one reason I love comic books because one, your mind is always thinking of new stuff. You always you're seeing how can I turn this to make it look exciting? You're creating stuff. How I need a, a blaster, you know, something that was, you know, designed, you know, a thousand years from now, or you know, a spaceship, or, you know, so it's just, it gets the mind going. So anyway, cover. Cover needs to be, it needs to be, what's the word? Um, it needs to jump out at you. You know, if you're going to have just somebody just standing there, where's that fathom book? It needs to, where's the fathom book? It needs to at least <clears throat> be really nice looking. Man, that disappeared so quick. I know I didn't put them back right in front of me, right in front of me. You know, sex sales, let's put it that way. Okay, so you have this, this beautiful woman, even though it's tiny, but you have this, this bright, you know, illuminating, you know, the character. So... I wouldn't do that with every book. I mean, you can get away with it. If it's a nice, cool pose, you can get away with it. You know, but your positions have to or need to be to where you see that. You're like, man, that's tight. What's what's going on? What is, who is she fighting? You know, she's beat up. The other girl's dying or whatever. You know, so that kind of makes you want to look into the book. You know, this one, no, not so much exciting. And this is what number six, you know, maybe it's got something to do with the end of number five. You know, and then six, you look, oh, she's alive or something like that. She's got a new outfit on, whatever, as I say, <clears throat> sex sales. So in even the X-Men, you know, it's, it jumps out at you. Even though he's covering up, you know, this, you know, the X-Men, you know, who, who doesn't know the X-Men? But, you know, it's, it's exciting. You know, they're fighting, they're, th they're throwing the little shurikens, shurikens, the knives, whatever. You know, we got this little master guy here and Wolverine's up front. Instead of using his claws, he's got a sword. So, you know, it's got to be exciting. It's got to be exciting. Like the clown in the woods all cut up with two axes fighting something. Okay? It's got to be <laughs> exciting. You have to have your, your cover, your title. Find the fonts that you like that will fit that. <clears throat> because I wanted something more clownish, circusish, circus, circusish. You know, so I didn't want the, the layout and then the trials. I put this this there for the trials. So I'm going to slowly continue to 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 better this cover as these covers as I go along. Something else, <clears throat> my throat. I don't know what's with that because it's been over an hour. I've been talking. Number a couple of I numbered the first one. <clears throat> I missed number. I didn't number this one. Don't put a price on your book. Because today it might be three dollars, tomorrow it might go up to five dollars. Inflation, you never know. Just put a number on your book, and then especially if you are if you are setting the price, you can set the price yourself or on the website. You tell when you have to say print it, you can say, okay, I want it to be four fifty, and then later on you can actually go back into the site and say, I'm going to up my price on my books because, you know, your books have become hot. They become the next, they become the next X-Men or the next Superman or Batman. So no, number one is not going to be $3 anymore. Number one is going to be like $45 because it's hot book. So yeah, so don't price it. Something I had, had to find out for myself, but always number it so that you'll know when you line up like this one. I don't know if this is number four or three. So always number it. Color wise, <clears throat> learn color theory it's good to have like a color chart handy so i keep this up on my wall so that i, I know i will know my colors like if somebody's in <clears throat> yellow you know your, your primary color and your secondary color next to that is purple you know it's always your opposite color your primary and your secondary color are going to be facing each other and uh, <clears throat> there's some other stuff to colors, but at least you'll know, okay, we'll, what, we'll go with red, you know, red, purple, what, I, when it's next to each other, is it tertiary, tertiary, ter, tertiary color? Yeah, okay, whatever. So in the color theory, you know, but just get a, a color wheel that way. Number one, you can say, okay, I like this blue and maybe uh, green. Uh, maybe blue and green is not so exciting. 
blue and yellow and throw some purple in there and then you'll have a way to keep track of your um, characters colors or your colors just whatever even if you're just gonna do grass or some sky you know you'll be able to to do that and say I have some purple in there because that purple is you know <sighs> yeah 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 so <clears throat> depending on your skill level as far as drawing and so forth depending on what you have do you have a laptop do you have programs that you can actually do your fonts you know do your you know your word balloons or color you know in your in your in your laptop depending on where you live in the world do you have a place where you can print uh your comics that will send your comics out do you live in a place that can actually receive comics so there's a lot of depends in doing this so as I stated in the beginning, which wasn't really the beginning, doing comics is a full-time job. It's a full-time job. And you have to, just like YouTube channel, you have to get your audience and you have to maintain your audience. If I did one video a year, nobody would know about my channel. So I have to continue to maintain doing those um, videos because if I say to you I'm going to do a, upload a video every Sunday and Thursday which I try to do and then you come back on a Thursday and it's not there and you say oh he, he, he's not there you might check a couple times and then you come back next Thursday and it's not there and you try one more time then I will lose you so comics doing this like this is this 2000 and this is book number five. I have book number six that was coming out. But in my, in my case, I have done YouTube. I have done children's books. I have done, um, what, four comic book titles. I've done a lot of stuff instead of just sticking with one thing. What does one person say? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. But there's another person say, put you know all your eggs in one basket. Don't keep jumping around. Someone said, um, what did they say? If you're going to build a mansion... <clears throat> you lay your bricks, you don't lay one brick over here and you lay another brick over here and you lay another brick over here. You'll never get it done. You have to lay one brick, you put another brick on top of that, you put another brick on top of that and you continue with those, which meaning, which, which means basically if I'm going to do this, then this is all, <clears throat> this is all I need to do is just put this out, work on this and put this out again. Let me cut and take care of my throat. All right, I'm on my phone, so bear with me for a little while longer. As I was saying, what he's saying is basically put all your eggs in that one basket. I find that hard to do. If I spent 10 years on this and nothing else, and this never made it, I would be really upset. But if somebody sees something that I've done, and take an interest in that one thing, I can always say, oh man, you know what? I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this. And that person will be like, wow, you are extremely talented. That is why one reason I say to people, if you can draw, there are so many different things that you can do, so many different fields you can go into. Uh, once you get your skills together, especially from the comic book standpoint, you know how to draw people. You know how to do the anatomy. You know how to do expressions on the face. You know how to do interior designs. You know how to draw cars. You know how to draw trees. You know how to draw cityscapes. Right there, there's so much talent you have that you can go in multiple directions to make money. If your comic book doesn't go, you say, okay, well, I'll, you know, I'll maybe I'll teach anatomy. Or I'll just I'll design clothes or something like that. You already you draw clothes on people every day, so. This is why it was hard for me to <clears throat> just do one thing, you know. So this is why I love comics, because you're doing so many things in that one thing that you're doing. So I think that is it for this question and answer session. Just remember, just go back over the video. If you if you missed something or you didn't, you know, just go back through it again. And, and you know, you, you get the information again about doing whatever you need to do. So where's phase three? This phase three, Tyler looking at that one. So let's look at this. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this will get up on, on time. I'm not going to say what day. It should be Thursday, but hopefully it'll get up on time. And then 
you'll get something out of it because that's basically what I want to do is to, to teach you guys <clears throat> how to do your own thing. Because somebody wrote me and said, oh, you're drawing a stiff. You need to have them do, uh, what was it? What was it? <sighs> Gesture drawings. You know, and I told them, I said, you know what? I'm not really worried about how my drawing looks. I'm worried about if they can get it. I try to teach the easiest way I can so that you guys who are new to art can pick it up and do your own thing. So, again, I'm going to ramble. So that's going to be it for this. Last page. Look at these pages again just because maybe it'll excite you. And then what is this? This is the page that I drew on that I have something on already. This is one of the from the YouTube channel. Get your anatomy right. Get your anatomy. Check out my channel. Get your anatomy right. Yeah, so okay, that's gonna be it because I'll be finding other things to show you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Tell a friend. I always say that. Tell a friend so I can get this channel going, so I can get more um, viewers, so I can get some revenue up in here, so I can retire and do this full time, so I can do more videos, so that more of you guys can learn and you can learn more. So that's gonna be it for me. Check out the Samurai Clown. Trials of the Samurai Clown, which is here at Kablam. I will leave you the um, link for you to check it out. And it's got some of my other books in it as well. All right, that's going to be it for me. See you guys in the next video. Keep drawing.